Welcome to Around the ECHL. Glad to be joining uh, you tonight. And Shane Alberani, the championship voice of your Fort Wayne Comets. How does that sound, buddy? Hey, man, that doesn't, doesn't, it hasn't gotten old yet, so uh, <laughs> feel free to use it. <laughs> well, you know what? You've had a little time to reflect now since you guys won the Cup. Take me through that magical ride for you, because I know it was an amazing one. I, I was along for a little bit of that ride and <laughs> a pretty exciting season for you in the comments. Yeah, you know, that uh, the last uh, the month of June there was, was pretty much a blur. I mean, we were on the road uh, starting Memorial Day weekend and, you know, we didn't stop until Fourth of July weekend. So, uh, you know, kind of an unusual situation, obviously, but everybody was in. But, you know, we went to, to Indy uh, to start Memorial Day weekend and then we went out to Utah to finish up the regular season. Then it was right to Wichita and then it was right to Allen and then uh, to South Carolina. So it was a crazy crazy month i mean it just blew by but i gotta say it was probably the most fun i have ever had was that whole month you know i can reflect on that as well uh you know i had a couple of great years here in allen ford as a matter of fact uh to to look back and think about and you know i was happy for you i, I knew how much that meant to you and, and your family and the organization and you know, obviously we wanted to win it in Allen, but, uh, you know, if I can't win, I'm always glad to see a friend get to raise and hoist that come up in the arena. How exciting was it doing it at home? Uh, you know, and th I mean, that's pretty special. And, and you know, uh, Fort Wayne has had 10 championships and uh, only one of them has been clinched away from Fort Wayne. So, I mean, that's that's really magnificent uh, that, that the fans all these years go back 70 years now have been able to uh, celebrate at home those championships. So, uh, no, it, it was really special because, you know, we'd finally gone to full capacity. Uh, the building was packed 10,477 and it was just a magical sound when that buzzer went off it was just a feeling like uh you know the world was back that's how loud it was so that's I mean it was that's, that's really it meant more to me it just felt like that it was, it was finally back to normalcy it was great that we won a championship but the fact that everyone was in the building to to enjoy it because I mean you know if, if the capacity had been down to what we were in the regular season you know 25 100 3,000 you know it, it may not have been as exciting but it was great to have uh, all the fans there and able to celebrate it together. You know, that's what I was, that's where I was going to go next. I was going to ask you about that because, you know, I know we talked about that too, towards the end of the season, things kind of changed for us. You know, the mask became optional. If you want to, you know, obviously if you want to wear your mask, you wear your mask, but uh, nobody was enforcing it anymore. But I remember coming to your building and, and it was some really good crowds when we were there uh, for the series against Allen. And I thought, man, this feels like hockey again. And it was, it seemed like forever, you know, I mean, not that, Hey, we appreciated the 2,500 people that were in the building for our games last year, but oh, for us this year to be back to hundred percent, it's just going to be amazing. Yeah, no, I'm with you. Uh, and hopefully, you know, us winning the cup and, and going into, into July, like we did, you know, that help helps us out as well. Um, uh, you know, we're still good. We're still, uh, you know, a little, little, uh, in the red area here in Fort Wayne. So the mask thing may actually still be in place when we start up. Uh, but again, that's just, uh, us being overly cautious and, and the fans have been great. So, uh, but again, you know what, it's great to, to have uh, the ability to be full capacity and hopefully, you know, uh, opening night rolls around. We've got, uh, the cup, we've got, uh, the, the banner raising in the ring. So it'll be a special night, no matter what. Did you get your own day with the cup where you had a chance to bring it out on that back patio of yours and maybe uh, have a few, uh, you know, Coors Lights or Pepsis or whatever your choice might be? Did you have it at home? Yeah, I, I did. And actually, I stole the cup. That That's my story. Got about boy. My house. Uh, <laughs> we, we had a little ceremony at the mayor's office. And uh, it was the last day where uh, a couple of most of the players had already left at that point, except for a couple. And it was basically the last day uh, the, the guy, the guys were basically leaving the next day. Uh, it was Anthony Petrozelli and Jackson Leaf, who was now a member of the Allen Americans. Yeah. Uh, so uh, uh, Petrozelli was actually going to leave the next day and he just kind of left the cup. He's like, I, I'm not taking this because I'd had it. He goes, I'm not taking it home. So I literally just walked out of the mayor's office with it and took it home. <laughs> Because I'm like, Good if I don't you. take it now, I'm not going to get it. <laughs> that, that's amazing. You know, you always love to see these stories, the NHL players, when they get their cup for the day, a lot of them taking it back to their hometown in, you know, Moose Jaw or wherever. And it's such a big deal for them. But, hey, it's a big deal for us each ECHL guys, too. You know, I remember that, you know, when, when we won it the last time when we beat Wheeling and I had it and I took it to downtown Dallas 
to a sports bar where I like to go. And I'm telling you, it was amazing. People, you know, of course, 90 pe- 90% of the people come up and say, is that the Stanley Cup? No, no, no. <laughs> a little bit smaller. But, you know, they were still excited. Just that excitement of seeing it. I know your fans have to be so happy and so proud. It was was it last year that was your magical year or is it this year it's going to be your anniversary year? Uh, this this coming up will be our 70th yeah. anniversary. So uh, wow. it's, it's a great way to, to start you know, your 70th season. And, you know, and that played into a lot of the reason why we played as well, because, you know, we didn't enter until, until February and, and we really weren't playing in, it, it was, uh, you know, the day that we were supposed to uh, tell the league that we were playing or not in, the, in, in January. And up until that day, it was still up in the air. And I think a big reason why we played was because we had our 70th anniversary and we wouldn't, didn't want that streak to end because I mean, 70 years in minor league hockey is just incredible. It just doesn't happen. So it's like, you know, we've managed to, as a franchise to weather a lot of storms in 70 years and we weren't going to let this one stop us. So, you know, it's going to be, it was going to be 70 years, not 69 seasons in 70 years. It was going to be 70 seasons. I got to ask you when you're counting down those final seconds to winning that championship, how much do you feel like Bob Chase, the legendary voice is there in the booth with you? And I have to imagine that you were thinking about him you know, when the clock finally hit zero and, and you realize you won the cup. Oh, absolutely. I mean, absolutely. And, uh, you know, it was, it was such a surreal moment because it was something I, I didn't want to plan anything. I just think that's just uh, bad karma. So nothing was going to be in my head as sure. what I was going to say. Uh, so, you know, when the buzzer finally hit zeros, I actually was speechless. I actually just took two or three seconds and just let the crowd just kind of to rush over me and able to just to, to, to drink it all in for uh, that moment. And, uh, you know, I was around for, you know, Bob called all the other ones, uh, the nine other championships. So uh, certainly he was there. And, and I think really what, what really hit me was when I went down to the ice and I did some interviews on the ice, that's what Bob really loved to go down and do that. So I really thought about him uh, when I got down on the ice. And of course, immediately I talked to uh, Sean Sidlowski right on the ice. And of course he right away, you know, gave uh, credit to Bob you know, that right there on the ice. So he was with us all that, that night. Absolutely. Shane Alberani, the voice of the Kelly cup champions from uh, the year that we'll never forget <laughs> the 2021 season. Uh, great year for Fort Wayne. Uh, glad you guys got a chance to play last year. It's exciting to have everybody back in the league this year. Shane, I know we were at the league meetings, you know, in Vegas back in August, it was great to see all the guys, some guys in new spots this year, David fine, Moves from Reading now. He's he's going to call Iowa home in that brand new franchise. Great building. Uh, it was just great to see everybody. And, you know, that's the one time of year when we can hang out together, talk shop, and, you know, we're not rushed to, to get a pregame show yeah. on or whatever. It was just so much fun. Great to see everyone. Yeah, no, that's, that's great. And, and you mentioned David Fine, you know, I didn't get to see him a whole lot when he was in Reading, but I'm going to get to see him a whole lot. Now he's in Iowa. So I'm sure you'll see him a bunch too. So yeah, so you get guys in new spots and you, know, you, you don't normally get to see very often, but now uh, you're going to, but you know what, if I don't see DJ and Wheeling uh, for a whole year, I'd be happy with that because we <laughs> saw each other an awful lot last year. <laughs> you know, he's going to find out about this somehow. I'm sure you're going to get an email or a phone call from him. Love that guy. He's amazing. As we head into the 21-22 season, what are you looking forward to the most? You know, I, I'm looking to forward, you know, this roster is really interesting. You know, you're just not going to have that collection of talent that you had last year. And that was yeah. league wide. I mean, the, the, the talent was so good uh, last year. I mean, you guys were, I mean, so skilled and so much fun to watch. And, you know, you're just not going to have that. So to see how this evolves with, uh, you know, the player pool is still kind of short because uh, you have the college kids get their year of eligibility back. So it's actually, um, you know, it's been a little hard uh, for some teams uh, finding some talent. So, you know, we got out ahead of it. You know, we signed guys right away. We definitely used that momentum of winning the cup and getting guys here and trying to re-sign as many as we could. But, you know, we've got some very, very interesting rookies that are coming uh, coming to town. And I, again, you know, when you get a, a new team like this year you're looking to see what what they have and I, and I think you know it's weird because not many guys uh, you know I think maybe six guys who are going to be actually defending the cup you know uh, but everyone else is going to be new uh, so you know that's that's always 
you know, a, a rough thing to do when you when you have to that, that kind of that kind of turnover. But uh, you know, I'm really interested to see, see how the new guys adjust to you know playing in front of crowds like that. And you know what? I mean, they're going to get jazzed up. It's like they'll be part of that ceremony opening night. But uh, you know, they're going to want to actually be a part of the ceremony next year. So I mean, you know what it was like. You know, you won four in a row. So you know, it never gets old. Well, Shane, you know what? I, I'm always happy when a friend of mine and a good friend gets a chance to celebrate. You and I are two of the the veterans in this league, so to speak. <laughs> We're the old guys. <laughs> yeah, we've got plenty of games under our belt. And, uh, you know, again, thank you for doing this. Always love seeing you, buddy. I wish we were coming to Fort Wayne or you were coming to Allen this year. But, hey, you never know what the uh, what leads to end of the play- playoffs. It could be that- again. You know what? That's right. You know, we don't, we haven't seen each other much in the regular season, but we've played two epic playoff series uh, over the years. Uh, so, you know, I would be OK with with just doing that again. Well, again, congratulations. Happy for you. Uh, great year for the Fort Wayne Comets. Your 2021 ECHL Kelly Cup champions. And when we continue around the ECHL, the commissioner, Ryan Cleveland, will join us. Shane, enjoy the rest of your night. Thanks, buddy. All right, back in a moment. Welcome to part two of Around the ECHL and pleased to be joined by the commissioner of the ECHL for the last how many years now? How many years is this for you, Ryan Creelan? Uh, This is year number four, uh, but uh, as you well know, it's been a complicated past uh, year and a half. Absolutely. Um, I'll start first of all with the first time I met you. Uh, and I go back to 2015 finals in South Carolina and I was down by the locker room and, and I remember you walked up and introduced yourself and I thought, man, this guy looks really young at the time. You weren't the commissioner, but you were knocking on the door, uh, as we would find out, uh, you know, just a, a couple of years down the road after that. Um, how, how has it been for you in those four years? What you had obviously the toughest run of any commissioner in this league. Um, dealing with COVID last year to where we are right now. Uh, have you found a few more gray hairs on that, on that uh, head of yours? And uh, I, I know it's been challenging for all of us, but a great job with what everybody did last year. Yeah. I mean, listen, there's uh, no doubt that the past year and a half has been complicated uh, and I'm not getting any younger. So I'm sure the gray hairs were going to manifest anyway. Um, but I think, you know, it, I've been, uh, in this role now for three years going into four and the ECHL I've been with for 15, 16 years. So having that background in history, the landscape, knowing a lot of the folks, uh, knowing the ins and outs of the league and all the pieces that needed to be covered was all invaluable to get through the past 18 months. Uh, It was an immense challenge. Um, You know, I'm thrilled that we were able to answer the bell. It wasn't easy. And unfortunately, we're still not, you know, out of the pandemic. Uh, But I've been real happy with the progress we've been able to to make. And again, to have that uh, uh, 2021-21 season uh, wrap up in Fort Wayne last year with a a full crowd uh, was really a nice, nice end to the season. For our fans uh, tuning in, everybody is now familiar with the with the term the bubble. Uh, we went through that bubble last year, and I know it was tough on, you know, fans, broadcasters, uh, fan club members from around the league who were used to at this level being able to get you know close to the players, have those personal relationship with with players in some cases, you know, almost like adopting them. Uh, you know, having players over to their house at Thanksgiving time and. I think that's the one great thing about this league, um, Ryan, is, is fans can get close to, you know, players and, and dance team members and, and broadcasters and, and people involved, you know, with the team where at the NHL level, it's really tough to do that. Um, explain to our fans, if you would, the difference from what we're looking at this year compared to last. Sure. Yeah. I mean, uh, listen, we, we pride ourselves in the ECHL on allowing fan access to the players, to the coaches, uh, you know, behind the scenes access. It's part of being a part of our community. And uh, that's what has made this pandemic so difficult because it's struck right at the heart of being able to, to get together. But we put the, you know, bubble, artificial bubble in place so that we could protect our folks and allow us to play a season. And again, we were able to work through that uh, last year. 
This year, you're going to see a lot of that uh, transfer over. However, it will become more permeable and more access, notably around vaccinations. And we recognize vaccinations aren't, aren't foolproof, uh, but they're an extra layer of defense that we're adding into our protocols in conjunction with the PHPA. And as folks become vaccinated, as our players become vaccinated, that allows us to do more things, allow more access, still you know, trying to apply some, some additional measures with masks and PPE or you know, keeping our distance, not congregating. Uh, but it, by putting a stacked approach together, it allows some of those on ice activities, some of the player fan activations to come back into play, whereas last year they really weren't. So uh, it will be more permeable. There will be more access. We just need to take everything in step uh, and be reasonable about it. So I know just in the last day or two here in Dallas, uh, the Dallas Mavericks announced that uh, fans will not be allowed uh, into the building without uh, proof of vaccination or proof of, uh, you know, testing uh, negative for COVID within the last 72 hours, maybe, I, th I think was the, the time. Um, I know um, I'm from Buffalo, New York. Uh, I know the Bills and Sabres both this year, uh, you know, I think it was about maybe a month ago, sent out the, uh, the press release. It said you will not be allowed in the stadium uh, without that proof of vaccination, both the Bills and the Sabres. I know depending on what part of the country you're in, sometimes uh, rules and regulations are different. How is that going to affect our league this year? Yeah, so I, from a, a, an ECHL standpoint, we're not going to have a league mandate for, for fans or, or access to the building. That will be handled based on the, the local jurisdiction and the buildings and, and their health officials will make their determination on that. Uh, what the league will oversee is you know access to players uh, requiring vaccinations, again, PPE, uh, things that we can control. So uh, as it relates to fans, that'll all be handled at the local level. Uh, as it relates to the players, that's what's you know part of our protocol and in, in negotiation with the PHPA. How about our Canadian teams, Ryan? <clears throat> I know last year we only played with 14 teams, and that in itself is amazing. We were able to do that. Uh, a lot of people uh, doubted that we'd even have a season. We did. Uh, how's it going to affect our Canadian teams and traveling in and out uh, from the U.S. to Canada this year? Yeah, so uh, nothing's easy, um, but we do have good news in terms of uh, the ability to travel in both directions. Uh, the standards are different depending on which way you're going, uh, but we have our immigration plans. We have our testing plans. Uh, we know what additional steps are needed. Uh, our, arriving into Canada, there's actually an app that needs to be facilitated, vaccinations are required. So uh, we know what the steps are currently uh, and we'll be able to comply with those to allow our schedule to, to proceed. Um, but we're also cognizant of the fact that these rules and regulations may change. So we need to be on our toes and, and have the ability to, to react uh, if that happens. Um, we're, we're ready based on the current situation. At this point, and I know you mentioned the PHPA and, and new rules and regulations. At this point, are all players in the ECHL or plan to play in this league this year? Do they have to be vaccinated in order to play? There, there's not a, a vaccine mandate, um, so you can be unvaccinated. However, uh, if that's the case, it's going to be almost like last year where until late in the season, everyone was unvaccinated. That, uh, that artificial bubble uh, the additional testing all remains in place. So uh, if, if you are vaccinated, uh, the bubble is much less. If you are unvaccinated, uh, there's a number of extra steps that need to be completed. As you know, uh, <clears throat> we don't have the salary of the NHL players. Uh, as a league, you know, we do things and we do it well, but uh, we're in the NHL. These guys might all get their own rooms in this league. Uh, these guys are sharing, players are sharing rooms. What about in a case of a player that's unvaccinated um, it, with, you know, all the vaccinated guys? How does that work? Is he required to have his own room? Uh, is he responsible for covering the, the room or how, is the team responsible? How does that work? Uh, uh, the, an unvaccinated individual is uh, required to have their own room and the financial uh, is actually a split 
uh, between the, the the team and the the player under our negotiated rules. Okay, good to know. Um, season coming up, excited obviously uh, for what's ahead. Great year for Allen last year, uh, making it to the Western Conference Finals. You know, great series with Fort Wayne. Congratulations to them; uh, they earned it. But you know, I know everybody's excited to get back. For us personally, uh, just announcing. Chad Costello recently uh, coming back to Allen, arguably the greatest player that's ever played in this league. You look at his numbers uh, in his three years here in Allen, 125, 103, and 122. Uh, I know my math is not my great, uh, my greatest of, of, of memories from high school, uh, but 350 points in three years is pretty amazing. No question. Um, you know, uh, he had a run there that, uh, is is MVP worthy and and awarded as such and and uh, you know fans should be excited to see his return. I think he's a little bit more seasoned now. Spent some time over uh, in Europe, uh, but really cool to see him back in the league. As far as and I know personally here in Allen, we lost a ton of players to Europe this year, and with you know players going back, getting an extra year of eligibility in in, in junior hockey and. Um, you know, I know that you look at the league and it looks like everybody's pretty balanced. You know, how does that affect our league this year with with losing so many players to Europe? Um, uh, you know, where where are we finding these players, I guess, is, is, a, is a good uh, and I get this question all the time for fans. Hey, we lost, you know, 14, 15 guys that went to Europe. Where are we going to find these players? Yeah, no, th this is an interesting year. I mean, you touched on it, uh, players leaving for Europe, extra year eligibility. So the player pool is much tighter uh, this year. Um, but I, I think it's it's incorrect to judge it against last year's player pool because things were so different. I mean, we lost a lot of guys to Europe this year, but they likely wouldn't have been with us last year uh, had it not been for the travel restrictions or, or guys – North and that was going on and not knowing how that would pan out. Uh, we also had the situation where the ECHL started before the NHL and the AHL. So that affected our, our player pool. And we also had less teams in the ECHL, meaning that uh, the player pool was much richer because it, it didn't need to be spread amongst an entire uh, league. So when you factor all of those equations in, uh, Comparing the player pool this year to last year just isn't right. If you want to go back the year prior, uh, I do think because of, again, what you touched on, the, the pool is a little tighter, but we're just kind of getting back to normal. Is it pretty amazing to you that in uh, still in a pandemic that this league has been able to add two teams, welcome our, our French speaking fans, as well as our, our fans in, in Iowa. That, that's pretty exciting. I, I'm, I'm honestly uh, real excited about both markets. Yeah, so, so am I. Uh, great fits for our league. Brand new buildings, which is always exciting to be a part of opening up a new facility. Uh, great ge uh, geography for our, our league in the north and in the central there. Kind of a connector between the central and the west with, with Iowa. Um, so some exciting stuff for us. Uh, I hope to be present at both here uh, in the next few weeks to welcome them and their fans to the league. And uh, don't forget to uh, Savannah with the, that building being under construction uh, will be ready for the 22, 23 season uh, was there with a hard hat on back in, in February. They've made uh, a ton of progress since. And uh, again, another great market for our league. Absolutely. Uh, Savannah, Georgia, one of the great, I mean, a lot of history in that town. Um, you know, my daughter and son-in-law uh, were in Buford uh, up until last year, which is just a 30-minute drive from Savannah. And automatically, you've got a, a built-in rival there with South Carolina. So uh, what a great market to, uh, to be investing in. Yeah. Is, I, the... Go ahead, Ryan. Oh. I'm sorry. No, say that one more time. I lost you for just a second. Yeah, I was just saying the uh, that market there with Savannah, you know, uh, just proximity to South Carolina, a built-in rival uh, automatically. It's going to be great. Yeah, no, uh, uh, I think multiple built-in rivals between Charleston and Jacksonville, and uh, the geography just plays really nicely for our Southern Division. 
So where and we always, and I think you and I've had this conversation on the air a few times when you've come to Allen, uh, always uh, gracious enough. And sometimes I just being too nice to say no, uh, coming in in the broadcast with me, but uh, what other markets right now are out there that the league is looking at? Uh, there's a couple of opportunities uh, in the, the Northeast uh, would certainly uh, like to get back to, to Manchester in the, the future. Um, Binghamton is now available uh, with, with the AHL departing. Um, have our eyes uh, to the West as well. There's uh, some former CHL markets that could come into play. Um, but mind you too, we're also growing uh, at such a, a nice pace here that uh, eventually we're going to hit our cap. So we won't be able to go everywhere. Right. Um, and I also don't want to take our eye off the ball of our current members either. I mean, this is an important year for us uh, to get reestablished, welcome back large crowds. Uh, so we've got, we, we certainly want to, to grow. We're you know, actively engaged in different discussions in, in markets, but uh, we also have to make sure that we can, uh, reestablish ourselves in the markets, notably those that weren't able to play last year. You know, I want to brag on our staff here just a little bit. You know, we've got a, a new VP of tickets. Uh, Johnny has been doing a great job here with, we got a, a brand new staff, some, some returning uh, staff members from years gone by. And, and uh, you know, we're up to, I believe 10 now on the ticket staff and they've just been uh, killing it. Uh, this off season with with uh, new tickets and season tickets so it's exciting to see that we're still in a pandemic but yet people maybe it's because everybody was stuck indoors last year but uh, people are coming out and, and uh, you know coming back yeah no, no I, I think uh, you know try and find silver linings in the pandemic I think uh, it made folks realize how much they miss live entertainment and live sports and certainly the atmosphere that hockey provides is is unmatched in a live setting so I think that bodes well for us but you know we still got to get people comfortable and, and getting used to coming back to the to the arena and uh, I think we are going to see that we're certainly seeing it in some of our numbers across the league in terms of uh, demand and, and growth of season tickets Alan uh, at the top of the list. In fact, uh, you guys uh, won one of our, our uh, ticket sales awards uh, over, over the summer at our summer meetings, you know, for your success leading into the 21, 22 season. And uh, you mentioned Johnny, uh, he is part of uh, one of our, our university programs, our internal uh, training programs, just got to spend some time with him in Atlanta, very bright and, uh, I think bodes really well for the future of the Allen Americans. Yeah, arguably, I can say he's the best thing that's ever come out of the New York Jets and the Oakland Raiders, <laughs> former Oakland Raiders, right? Um, last thing, you, uh, and I saw you at the league meetings, and uh, man, I got I to gotta give you a lot of credit. You look so different. I didn't even recognize you. you you've <laughs> dropped a lot of weight, and, and I'm telling you, that's it's not easy to do. Uh, you know, I in the last two years, you know, personally, I've dropped 57, uh, a little yeah, bet with our, yeah. our owner, Jack Galati. But, uh, man, you, you did a great job. Give us the secret to your success in dropping all the weight. Yeah, uh, well, appreciate that. And uh, congratulations to you as well. Um, I'm hoping I'm not going in the wrong direction here now as uh, some of my travel picks up. But uh, I think it's really just about eating right um, and, and having that mentality and uh, perhaps I should be ashamed to say it, but, uh, for the first 36 years of my life, I probably really didn't know how to eat. Um, so once you kind of get that mentality and, and think about it, uh, it's, you know, it, it's still a struggle for me, but, uh, uh, when you think before you eat, uh, it allows you to put things into proportion and the results end up coming. So, uh, I'm happy my clothes fit. <laughs> yeah, you know what? I was going to tell you, it looked like you might need to go down a couple sizes or two. <laughs> that that coat was looking awful big on you, which is which is a good thing. Those are the things right. that you you're, you're proud of the most, um, because you know what? And I'm telling you, for me personally, um, and you know, I have a great family, and and um, you know, obviously some adorable little grandkids now, uh, which really makes me feel old. As I was telling Shane, you know, he and I are, are I never would have believed this because, I mean, we just joined the league back in 
uh, you know, 2014, but um, we're two of the uh, senior broadcasters now, been around the longest. That sure. goes to show you how people move up and down. And, and I've got, uh, you know, you got a, a long life to live and you got to be healthy. And I think the one, the one thing that, like you said, Ryan, and it's amazing because we've been around for a long time, you got to learn how to eat. And that's, you know, it seems simple, right? But how many times do you come home and you're tired and you don't feel like cooking something and it's real easy to order a pizza or, you know, stop at a drive through or whatever. Um, and, and I'm telling you, it catches up with you quick. Yep. No, no question. So uh, again, it's not easy. Um, but it's, uh, when you have the right mindset, it's attainable. Well, thank you again, uh, for always, you know, giving, uh, your time. I know you got a, a busy remaining here a couple of weeks until we, uh, we get this thing going, but great job by you. Um, my buddy, Joe Ernst, my Buffalo brother, uh, <laughs> and, and all the rest of the staff at the ECHL who do an awesome job. And, uh, hopefully somewhere, you know, down the road this season, I'll, I'll see you in Allen or run into you somewhere. Yeah, no, absolutely. Uh, you know, I will have more travel this year than, than last year. Uh, but again, in, in due time and stride here, uh, we want to make sure we kick off, welcome our folks back, uh, and then I'll hit the road. Ryan, again, thanks for doing this, buddy. I appreciate it. All right. Take care, Tommy. Thank you. The commissioner of the ECHL, Mr. Ryan Creelick.